Welcome! This is Jane Gardner and today we're going to be doing our video not live. And in fact we're looking over in the wrong way. Oop! Sorry. This is Jane Gardner and welcome to Solopreneur Success Strategies. Today Google is not working for Hangouts so I'm going to record this with Snagit and see how it goes. So today is all about your customer. Today is World Domination Wednesday where we talk about your customer and how you can get your customer, who is your customer, once you have your customer, how you can give them great service and keep them as your customer. So right now we're talking about customer service. Um, if you want to look at some of the previous shows you can go to my YouTube channel at jgtips.com backslash YouTube and go to my Solopreneur Success Strategies channel where World Domination Wednesday is all about your customer. So today we're talking about customer service and let's have a look at uh, first off who I am. I'm Jane Gardner and I work with my husband in a structural engineering firm in Western Canada and about three years ago I came onto the internet to help others start their home business. So today we're going to be talking about customer service. And today it's all about planning in advance. But first, we're going to have a preview of what we've done so far. Well, in the beginning of the show, <laughs> of the Earth, World Domination Wednesday, we asked, who are your customers? And of course, everyone is not your customer. And so we had a look at uh, profiling who your customers are and how you can do that. So, for example, your customers are those who want your solution to their problems or they want your solution to fulfill their desire. And there are three point, well, there's 3.5 billion people probably now on the internet using um, the internet today. And from those people, I'm sure we can figure out who our customers are and attract them to our product or service. So previously we looked at who is your customer, you know who are your ideal customers, you know what they want that you can give them, you know where to find your ideal customers from the previous shows, and you know when and how they like to buy. And I showed you some of the places that you can find out about that. As well, we looked at what is the ideal customer experience uh, going through your business, and how to provide some of the features of the ideal customer experience. And for those who missed those episodes, you can catch up on jgtips.com backslash YouTube. We also had a look at converting your prospects into customers. So um, I am a um, CRG associate and we uh, like to think that we know about sales style and in the theory for uh, personality development factors model there are each person has four personal style factors in them behavior interpersonal cognitive effective expressive but at different levels which makes us all unique and makes up your personality as well of course everything you do when you, as you grow up. However there are certain traits uh, to the four personal styles which can be detected with knowledge and experience such that you can adapt to another person's personal style for a better relationship and also of course for be being better to sell uh, to people. So when you're working with customers, there are four different buying styles of which each of us have one more dominant in our personality than someone else. So detecting a person's buying style, you can be more successful as a salesperson, of course, with training. And I have a course on how to do that at you and your sales style. It's called jgtips.com backslash p style. And it's all about your sales style as well as your uh, customers buying style and we look at how to um, be customer focused selling um, making sure that you have readiness and willingness levels to understand credibility and identify your preferred selling style and determine our customers buying style and then we curate action plans on how to have a better uh, customer buyer uh, relationship that's at jgtips.com backslash p style so once you have your customer, what does good ser customer service really mean? 
And of course, we looked at that on one episode, and one of the things, of course, is you need pleasant, friendly, and patient staff. So be as friendly and polite as possible, be patient, and make it focused on the customer. And there's a certain um, progression through the customer service um, dialogue with your customer when it comes to customer service. Uh, first you listen to what the customer's issue is, you acknowledge that the customer has an issue, uh, then you ask them a few questions to find out more about the issue, um, and then you talk back to them and confirm what you, they feel is the issue, so we make sure you're both on the same uh, level of understanding about what the issue is, and then you provide some answers and solutions to their issue, and then check back with them to make sure that they feel that they, you have solved the issue. So in, a, in effect, it's all about listening to your customer. So what's the mindset of a customer service rock star? Rock star, excuse me. Um, well, you look at complaints as opportunities, opportunities for learning, opportunities to um, be better uh, customer service rock star. Um, there's always a solution no matter what the issue is and it's just a matter of finding out what that solution might be and it doesn't end at quitting time customer service um, regardless hopefully you have something after hours whether it's on the website or in in your um, phone uh, messaging that you people can uh, come and uh, talk to customer service so you stay with them until they're fully satisfied with your answers and show them how to do things themselves and maybe have a few tutorials and frequently asked questions. That's what we looked at uh, last week about how to make sure that you have a frequently asked questions area in your customer service and then how to develop your frequently asked questions. So with the rest of the um, work staff uh, brainstorm and start with all the questions that people have asked previously um, list them all down and, and hopefully list the answers to those questions and get everyone involved and ask everyone to write down any questions that come up and when they talk to a customer so that you can develop a, f a full and detailed uh, frequently asked questions and of course once you have these questions make sure you have policies and answers to these questions so that you're always on the same page with your customers in terms of their understanding and your understanding what the policy is for the answers to those questions and as well you could always look at your competitors um, information and see how they um, deal with the frequently asked questions of their customers and maybe take some of those frequently asked questions that might relate to you and put them in your answer as well as uh, figure out from the kind of discussion that you can have back and forth as to what uh, are some of the issues that need to be answered that you haven't answered so far as far as frequently asked questions. So having a very deep and uh, fully full database of uh, frequently asked questions is a great way to have great customer service. And then today we're going to have a look at um, what is your customer service plan you should make for your business. So you should always plan in advance to make um, it as part of your customer service or cut marketing, well not your marketing plan, but your business plan to have a section where you develop your customer service plan. So you plan that in advance and treat everyone with respect. Make it loud and clear that you do have policies that they can uh, certainly get answers to their questions because you have policies written down. Listen, listening and acting upon their questions um, also provides a great customer service and stay focused and uh, make sure that they understand what your answer is before you um, get go on to the next customer and don't promise of course what you can't deliver that's one obvious one that sometimes people don't mention that you know don't go promising the stars when you can only get them the moon and of course spy on your competition so let's have a look at that so you always want to plan in advance um, to make sure that you have good customer service. Make sure it's part of your business plan and don't wait for a breakdown to start thinking about how to handle difficult situations. 
Always make sure you have a system for dealing with all sorts of issues, uh, whether they're issues with the product or service you have or just with your customer service. Just make sure you have policies in hand before you start or even as you're progressing to put into your pan, into your policies, into your operating procedures binder so everybody's on the same page. And most importantly, treat everyone res with respect, whether you're an employer, employee, the customer, even an angry customer is worthy of focus and time. And this will create a culture of respect, um, whether it's with your the rest of your workmates or with the customer. Then if you're able to be patient and listen and understand and then help solve a problem for a customer, then you will be getting a reputation for having good customer service. And always make it loud and clear as to what your philosophy and standards are for your business. Certainly you can always make sure you're talking about what kind of guarantee you have for um, when someone buys your product or service, where it's a 30, 60, you know, 120, whatever. Make sure it's written down and available on the sales page as well as all your customer service is aware of your policies so that all employees should be on the same page as far as what your standards are for customer service. And always listen and act. Listening is a very important um, ability, whether or not it's for customer service or anywhere else. And listen and act on all feedback and seek opinions and experiences. There are certainly software tools that you can add to your website, which can pop up and ask um, anyone visiting your website whether or not they had good customer service. And if they'd be willing to do a quick survey, uh, don't do it too often, but it's always good to have that on your website. It shows that, first off, you're concerned about other people and your, whether or not they're having good service. And, of course, second off, it gives you great feedback to know where you need to change, possibly in your website or into your product or service. And then make sure that you're always customer focused whenever you're planning for making a customer service plan. Your goal is to help solve the problem. Take on their problems as if it were your own. And make sure that you listen to what they have to say and acknowledge what they have to say. But most importantly, do not promise what you can deliver because making promises you can't keep will end up doing more damage than good. If you can't keep a promise, then you'll be known as someone who is unable to deliver and it won't help your reputation at all. Everything is based on your reputation, whether or not our customer will come back and buy from you again or even come back and visit your website or your, your store. So make sure that everyone is clear on what you can promise and what the limitations are as far as your customers uh, s service and make sure it's in your training manuals so everyone's clear on what kind of promises they can and cannot make and you can always of course spy on the competition read what customers are say about them figure out how to top them as well as get some great advice from your competitors as to what kind of customer service they have and maybe develop some similar uh, customer um, attitudes if they feel that they're appropriate to your business. So customer service takes custom constant attention and improvement so always keep listening to what they have to say. Always recognize them and recognize that they have value as far as what they have to say about whatever it is and if they you do, they will understand that even though you may not be able to help them with their issue, you are at least recognizing that they have a valid uh, question. And if you have to, just quickly, uh, you know, give them a refund or whatever else. If you are unable to give them a solution that uh, they feel is good. Because if you have good customer service that is responsive and willing to um, listen to your customer, whether they have an issue that could be correct or not correct, could be wrong, but you're still listening and then you can give solutions, 
well, these they will probably come back and buy from you again and again because they know that you're listening to them and which validates their issue. So there you go. I think that's a good overview of customer service. And I'll have to think about what we're going to talk about next week, maybe how to keep them as your customer if we haven't done that already. So I hope this works as a recording. And thank you for listening. This is Jane Gardner.